Welcome. I'll be straight up. I think this is one of the more important videos that we're going to do this year. So let's just go. Between Cataclysm and Mists of Pandaria, over 10 years ago, a particular book was released. It is one that everyone on the Warcraft team should absolutely bloody read. It is called The Progress Principle by Amabil and Kramer. And the Great Vault violates every rule in the book, in addition to violating a lot of other basic rules of motivational psychology. The book has advice for managers on how to make staff happy and good at creative work. That's not why they should read it. They should read it because it tells us that our emotion, perception, and motivation are more important than any extrinsic reward. And it is a gateway to why the Great Vault and its like are killing the game in the name of short-term benefit. The crux of the book's research is that people are most motivated, productive, and happy when they are making progress towards meaningful work. How is this relevant to World of Warcraft, you may say? Well, the one thing that made the MMO genre special was that sense of meaningful progress that you could work for. Azeroth, let's be real, it was a better place to spend time than school, or perhaps work. Playing it was fun, and the progress was more obvious. It follows, then, that a lot of Amiel's learnings on creative work also apply within the game. Instead of what the book calls inner work life, we may have an inner game life. Makes sense. I mean, come on. We've all played the game. We know how it feels to play a game, be invested in our progress, and actually care. Her research tells us how to improve this inner game life, but it also tells us what damages it and makes our game lives substantially worse. The vault violates every rule. It must be replaced, and Blizzard must learn why. The vault fails behavioral psychology in three specific ways. First, making you play the game. The game tells you to finish tasks so that you can tick a box and maybe get a reward next week. But the task itself, playing, is supposed to be fun. Research has shown that motivation that comes externally from rewards, or as we call it, extrinsic motivation, that it can damage your desire to do the thing because you want to. And doing something because you want to, that is called your intrinsic motivation. It's an effect that is called the over-justification effect, and it can turn anything that is supposed to be fun into a chore. And there's a related principle. According to cognitive evaluation theory, we get demotivated by being manipulated. And the vault setup is pure coercion. If you only do one Mythic Plus run, you have a tiny chance to get something useful. So buckle up, buckaroo! Get down to those Mythic Plus engagement mines, whether you want to or not. This is, per the book, a toxin. And these toxins are what they describe as being the key things that hurt progress and inner work. Inner work life, of course, inner game life. It directly undermines you, the player, and your effort. The second way it fails is in the randomness resulting in major bad experiences. The Great Vault, and of course the Weekly Jest before it, are repeating the exact same mistake that Titanforging made. There is a lot of science behind rewarding people, and the Skinner box is obviously the famous example. A rat pulls a lever and it gets a reward. It's effective, but not forever. So the scientists found a way to make that rat pull that lever. RNG, or to be a bit more scientific, variable ratio reinforcement, which is giving users rewards randomly. That is, of course, used by gambling machines by WoW loot, it's used to condition players to pull the lever more. And we know that at least in the short term, it does work. So they turned it up a notch by adding Titan Forging. Bonus, unexpected rewards, 
according to a lot of the research, are actually good for motivation. So you might think, great, job done, we fixed it. But here's the problem. The problem is you. You're intelligent. You're breathtaking. Humans are pretty smart. So we get used to the randomness. And once players got used to Titan Forging, it meant that any non-upgraded item that dropped just felt like losing the dice roll. The weekly box feels exactly the same. You have a chance at a great item, but it could give you something that you do not want, wasting your entire week and all of your effort. And because the Great Vault is so bigged up in its importance as a major source of character progression, the fall, the disappointment, well, it's all the more great. This Great Vault is a little bit more complicated and it does have more backups, but you can still end up with nothing useful or something that's not as good as what you expected. Every single time we know why it's gone wrong and it's nothing except frustrating. A system that will give you nothing useful on a progress track, on the progress track it is supposed to. After hours of work put into the game, that will make players feel genuinely awful. Now, while random reward ratios work in isolation, if you run them forward in the fullness of time, that random reward becomes expected. Blizzard added in all of this extra randomness because they thought that valor points and justice points were quite simply getting too boring. This was stuff they were thinking about in the eras of Wrath of the Lich King and Cataclysm as an impending problem that the game would have to deal with. But what happens is that just like that deterministic reward system, we expect it. We expect the Titan Forging. We expect the Great Vault. So we're back to all of the inherent downsides of a deterministic reward system. We're right back to square one with the over-justification effect being an issue in game design. But now, in addition to that core problem, we have added in all of the downsides of the player's time being wasted by those layers of randomness. And that's how, in spite of all of Blizzard's efforts to make rewards in World of Warcraft more motivating, it is in fact less motivating. Now, as the book discusses, two of the key three things that actually damage the inner life are setbacks and hindrances. So let's apply them to the vault. The Great Vault not giving you the item that you need or want is going to be a major setback, and being locked out of any more progression until the next week is a hindrance. So we've done the first one, we've just done the second two. That is all three negatives, and it gets worse. The third way it fails is by not understanding the impact. If humans were spreadsheets, we would simply accept our loss and we would move on. But we're not. We are irrational. We have, for obvious evolutionary reasons, a negativity bias. And that means that our brains are hardwired to take negative information in differently to positive information. We literally feel bad things more and we remember them for longer. No good role will make up for a bad role that, unfortunately, is how we are hardwired. And indeed, it's a problem we feel in places other than just video games. At its core, the Great Vault is a massive negativity landmine, just waiting for players to step on it, to feel the explosion, and to never want to touch the game again. They added it, Blizzard did, to solve a bunch of gearing problems, but we say, was it worth the risk? such as the risk of showing you this. This is our February loot over on Patreon. I mean, the risk is obviously you might now abandon this video at this point and click off, but hey, look, shinies. And there's no great vault here. These are pretty damn deterministic. And it supports things such as, oh, I don't know, how about Matt mega diving deep into the literature to further our quest of working out why you and me, when we play games, feel the way that we feel. Because I think we all know that we can get super into a game, and then maybe some things change, and suddenly, that little nugget, the little nugget of just, oh, I have to do this, I have to keep on playing this game, I'm having so much fun, it just falls away. 
that's what we're doing right now. And hey, on the Patreon, we're doing a lot of uh, world building with what we're doing this year. You can get class cards to adorn your desk. You can get the pin and all the rest that we do over there. So thank you for the support. It's content like this that is what it allows us to do. And with that, let us return to the vault. If you have a bunch of objections so far into this video, perhaps saying that the vault has been fine for you, either regularly dropping you upgrades, or maybe just you don't mind when it doesn't, then that is in fact completely valid. But for everyone with that positive experience, there are more who will be shafted. Blizzard will often think about this in terms of a bell curve, and they will think, oh, most of the people are fine. You know, the bell curve deals with them and they're all happy. I think what Blizzard may be does not understand is that for the people who even fall the slightest bit outside of the bell curve, they will weigh their negative experience more than their positive experiences. And it's not just because, as I have sort of been told, they are, sometimes people at Blizzard think this, they are toxic gamers. It's not because of that. Thinking that is a convenient way to not accept your own failings in understanding basic motivational psychology and how it applies to game design. You see, for everyone who cranks out their 10 Mythic Pluses each week and doesn't think about the Vault, there are multiple players burning themselves out, only doing it for the Vault, for that nugget of progress. World of Warcraft's next patch might even make this problem worse, because tier gear will come in the Vault, and that will be something that people will want. So if a chest piece appears in the Vault that's not a bit of tier chest, well, that is going to feel like a loss. And this stuff feels bad because that's how Blizzard designed it. They may not know they did that, but it's what they did. Now, they designed the vault to solve two problems. The problem with Mythic Plus loot and, well, the problem with engagement. As a solution to loot, it is definitely better than the weekly chest of old. You can play less and risk just getting one item, or you can play more and get a higher chance. It's a bit more fair. It's a straight upgrade. And of course, it does help raiders and PvPers out as well. When it plays nice, it acts like a choice-based backup to the existing random loot, and that is genuinely a great thing. The problem is that it's too random, and it tries to coerce people into playing, violating our earlier rules. As a solution to engagement? I don't know. Maybe it works and we're all wrong. I can certainly go off how I feel, how it made me feel, why it did the opposite of motivate me to play the game. I can think about how it impacted my entire guild, who are playing World of Warcraft less than they ever had, ever. And of course, the many people who report to me the same. But ultimately, only Blizzard can look at their numbers. But if I was to look at their monthly active users, and the amount of Mythic Plus runs that are being done each week, those numbers do not look good. What we do know is that it motivates players to do content that they may not enjoy with rewards that they may not get. And that is a psychological red flag. The Great Vault actually introduces more problems than it fixes. Thankfully though, we have a solution. Gearing has always been the universal progress in WoW and Amabile's book it lays out how to make progress feel good. The book's full title is The Progress Principle, Using Small Wins to Ignite Joy, Engagement, and Creativity at Work. Small wins. That means consistently making little bits of progress. And the way to do that is rather obvious. Deterministic rewards on a slow but steady track of progress. Imagine a world where, instead of the Great Vault, you just have Valor Points. Maybe with a seasonal cap, probably with a seasonal cap. Uh, maybe a cap that grows based on your Mythic Plus score breakpoints just to keep that feeling of really climbing the ladder. Perhaps you can trade in Valor for almost any dungeon item that you want, probably around one item per week, instead of having to just wait for them to drop. That would regularly give you one of the key positives that the book lays out for success. Regular, meaningful progress. Blizzard could, if they wanted to, exclude trinkets, perhaps weapons, just to give the actual loot grind, uh, you know, the more texturful pace that I think they would want. Then you could, well, 
you could spend less of the currency to upgrade your drops to that higher item level, like we have now, but a bit more tightly designed. Maybe let Valor Points be refunded later on, because ultimately it is on a seasonal cap. All in all, this would give you an immediate reward for finishing the week's 10 dungeons, providing you reasons to continue farming dungeons if you want for more chances of loot that you can then upgrade and such, and would of course remove all the cases of terrible luck leaving you with nothing for that exact same amount of work. It is basically the same thing right now, but with more generous valor, a valor vendor, and no vault. And if this makes you feel funny, I would say, have your thoughts been corrupted by the crazy, insane loot systems Blizzard have developed over the last few years. Because in terms of what this means for you as a player, it means you actually get the same amount of loot, if not more. It means you can more design the way that your character progresses. It means that there is a more clear output to your input. It means that the actual pace of gearing can be tightly designed. It could be designed to provide gear at a similar rate to raiding, or maybe with content-specific bonuses so neither steps on each other's toes. And the worst players could feel is maybe having to farm out a trinket. Otherwise, it would be a slow and steady race to best in slot gear. And if you are saying, but why will players continue once they're done with the week, or when they get bis? The answer is, they can if they want to play the game. Just have some rewards for extra valor points. You could also throw in justice points as a more liberal currency that the game throws around and have other things on the vendor. Blizzard could design something quite interesting there if they really wanted to. And if those players don't want to come back, well, hey, they achieved BIS, they played around with BIS. That's it. Let them wander away. Don't force them to continue playing the game. Don't try to use coercive motivational design, coercive reward loop design, to try to get them st to stay just that little bit longer. Because all that does is inspire resentment. And I think if you think about how a lot of players seem to feel about World of Warcraft right now, I think resentment is a very strong word, and I think a very accurate word. Also add Master Loot back. Blizzard, you said cross-faction was against a lot of players' wishes and experiences, but it's okay because it's opt-in via the pre-made group finder. It's not default anywhere else, and it can be entirely reward uh, avoided. So, Blizzard, do that with Master Looter. You now have absolutely no excuse not to. Limit it to guild majority groups and make it a checkbox in the group finder. That way, almost all of your raid loot problems disappear virtually overnight and you will be celebrated. Turn loot up a tiny little bit, maybe reward some badges from raids, just like we did in Wrath, so we can all have that same, you know, small deterministic progress every week and actually feel good playing your game. And just to wrap up advice from the book that perhaps WoW people should read, the other two positive forces from the book are catalysts, uh, events that directly help, and nourishers, which are the opposite of toxins. Uh, basically, positive influences. In the workplace, this is usually access to resources and inspiring, helpful uh, managers and team members. Replicating that in World of Warcraft is an entirely different topic and a very interesting one. But if anyone at Blizzard is watching, I mean, number one, I suggest you figure out how to get some of that in your own company. And then number two, think about the social design of the game and how it can have more of those things. But actually, while we're talking about employees, how did Blizzard let the Great Vault happen? We need to look further into this book, but the answer lies in their priorities. The field of positive game psychology does seem to be small. There are designers paying attention to this field, but clearly few of them work at Blizzard Entertainment. What Activision and Blizzard do have, though? Well, that's data analysts. Analysts and researchers to parse their game and all of the Battle.net metrics. The amount of time you spend logged in. How many Mythic Plus runs you've done this week, and so on. That's genuinely really cool, but data does not communicate feel. 
Metrics don't tell you why or when a long time fan has logged out for the last time. You can think a feature is great because lots of people are doing it, but I know a lot of people did Corthia and all that, all that there is now from those people is resentment. You have to train your designers in player psychology so they can understand what impact their systems will have in the short term and in the long term. And trust me, the long term is what's important. How we players feel is more important than what we do. You can easily design what we do with your reward loops. A lot of people could be going around Zareth Mort's killing lots of rares to get a rep faster. And you might see that and think, oh, those rares are great. They're really successful, just like our rares in Corthia. I think if you actually talk to players though, you'll really find out that that's not a particularly fun system that people enjoy doing. Your data may not be telling you the truth. It's not really in the data's ability to tell you much. The data just is what it is. I think a very different lens is required when interpreting that data. And I think when that lens is used, a lot of very fundamental things become extremely obvious. We look back at the game, we reflect, and I think we can understand why motivation has truly been damaged. Okay. If you want to watch another video over on our MMO channel, we are doing, there's a similar video covering other topics, all about the motivational psychology. It may be out by the time of this video, it may not be, but no matter what, subscribe to that channel, head up that video. I think as people who play MMOs, this is some of the most important stuff for us to understand. And with that, thank you for listening to this video, for watching this video. Please share it around, maybe your guild or whatever, because I think that the word on things like this is just super important to get out there because we're fastly realizing that this is the almost the number one existential threat to the fundamental reason why so many of us play video games and the hunt for short-term results could actually be burning through people who love rpgs and that's just fucking sad okay that's it for me have a wonderful day i suppose if i was to say anything Game smart, be introspective, and I will see you next time. <laughs>